Hi, I'm Solen. And I'm Chris. Solen, I have a question for you. Have you ever gone through a time where you had to change something about yourself just to try and fit in? A hundred percent, yes. There was a time when my friend group in elementary school, all artists, drawing, painting, and I tried really hard, but I just never had the talent and I could never be like them, really. Yeah, I've been there too, and it feels really tough. Well, today we're gonna find out about how God helps us be the way he created us to be. Let's check this out. Why did the sponge go to church? Because it was holy. Hi everyone, I'm Natasha and I'm so excited to be back here with you again today. Have you ever changed the way you acted or dressed or even spoke to fit in with a group of friends at school? Well, that's exactly what I did and it was actually really hard to keep up. Now my friends and I noticed this and we decided that I would be much happier being myself. And that leads me to today's big idea. God helps us be who he created us to be. Now last time, we heard the story of a young guy named David and how he was chosen by Samuel to be the next king of Israel. Even though David was the youngest of his brothers, God chose him to be the next king because God looks at what is in our hearts. Even though David was young, we can learn from him that we are never too young to serve God. Now remember, David wasn't the king yet. The king was a man named Saul. Saul had listened to God at first, but then he didn't. In fact, he disobeyed God. When he did, he started having a hard time. The Bible tells us that an evil spirit was bugging Saul. So Saul asked for a heart player to come make him feel better. The heart player that was sent to him was, wait for it, David. Yep, David, the boy who would someday become king, the shepherd, and yes, a harp player, was sent to Saul to play his harp when Saul felt the evil spirit bugging him. And it really helped. So Saul had David stay with him, and Saul really liked David. Another nation, the Philistines, came to fight the Israelites. So Saul and all his army went down to fight them. The biggest, baddest Philistine soldier, Goliath, stood in front of the Israelite army. Now Goliath was over nine feet tall. He challenged the Israelites by saying that he would fight the very best soldier. If their soldier won, he and all the Philistines would become slaves to the Israelites. But if he won, all the Israelites would have to become the slaves of the Philistines. Did I mention Goliath was nine feet tall? Saul and the Israelites were terrified. Now, David's three oldest brothers were part of Saul's army. They were there and they were very afraid too. Now at that time, David's father, Jesse, had sent David with some food to where the armies were gathered. When David arrived, he went to see how his brothers were doing. Just then, Goliath came to shout out his challenge again. All of the Israelites were so afraid of him, but David wasn't. He asked, who does this guy think he is? But David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David and he said to him, why are you even here? Who's taking care of dad's sheep? In other words, Eliab thought the only thing David was good for was being a shepherd. Eliab wanted to limit who David was, but David didn't listen to his brother. Again, he asked, who does this guy think he is? Eventually, Saul heard what David was saying. He sent for Saul. David told Saul that he would fight Goliath, but Saul said, you're too young, you can't. David told Saul that he'd been taking care of his father's sheep for some time, and sometimes a lion or a bear would come take a sheep, and David would go after the animal and fight it if needed. David believed God would keep him safe. Saul said to David, okay, go. Then Saul dressed David up in his armor. The armor was all made for Saul, and it was so clunky on David. In fact, David walked around it for a while and felt really weird. It wasn't really who David was either. Finally, David said, I can't wear this, I'm not used to it. So David picked up the things he knew, a wooden staff, stones, his shepherd's bag, and his sling. David went toward Goliath and Goliath approached him. Goliath thought he looked so young and he asked, why are you coming at me with sticks? Do you really think I'm only just a dog? Then David said, well, let's read this from the Bible. You are coming to fight against me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He is the God of the armies of Israel. He's the one you have dared to fight against. This day, the Lord will give me the victory over you. And as Goliath moved to attack David, David ran to meet him with a stone and a sling in hand. David flung the stone at Goliath and it hit him right in the forehead. Goliath fell right down. King Saul turned to the commander of his army and said, who is this guy? Whose son is he? 
The commander said he did not know, so he went to get David, and Saul asked David, Whose son are you? David said, I'm the son of Jesse from Bethlehem. From that day on, David stayed all the time with King Saul, and he became best friends with Saul's son, Jonathan. David could have continued to be a shepherd and harpist. No one saw him being the brave guy who would step up against a giant. Even though David had been anointed to be the next king, other than his family, people didn't really know this. No one thought that David was going to be anybody special. No one saw what God saw in him, but David relied on God. David trusted God, and David believed wholeheartedly that God was for him. And as a result, God helped David be who he created him to be. And that reminds us of our big idea today. God helps us be who he created us to be. And that may look a lot different from what we think, but when we get close to God and get to know his great big love for us, we learn who he created us to be. Well, I'm Natasha and that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Turn to the person right next to you and answer the following questions. Before the time runs out. Question time. God created David to be himself, not to be someone else. How did we see that in this story? Groundhogs. Can you say the key verse before all the groundhogs drop? Get ready. Three, two, one, go. Say it with me. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outside of a person. But the Lord looks at what is in the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. David became the man God made him to be, and nobody saw that coming. Absolutely, and did you notice how he didn't hesitate for a moment? He knew that God was with him, and that's what gave him the confidence to stand up against a giant of a man. Next, we're gonna look at a story about somebody whose life was completely changed when they reached out to God. Let's check it out. Uh, one of my favorite places in the world is my cottage. We go up there all the time and we play a lot of sports, like water skiing and tubing. When I was living in Luxembourg, everything was super close, so we got to do a lot of traveling. It was driving distance to France, Germany, Italy, and it was really fun. Fun fact about Luxembourg is that there are 75 castles there, and that it's the safest nation in the world. They have the highest minimum wage in Europe, and it's the second richest country in the world. I love spending time with my friends. We used to go into the city and go shopping and watch movies and everything was super close so we got to do a lot of stuff together. Let me introduce myself. Ich heiße Chloe und ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Uh, je m'appelle Chloe et je parle un petit peu de français. Uh, I just said that my name is Chloe and I speak a bit of French and German. So um, we lived in Luxembourg for four years. I moved there going into fifth grade, and it was because of my dad's work. And we just recently moved back, right before high school. When I moved back to Canada, it was a really hard transition. I had a lot more anxiety, and I was really attached to my friends in Luxembourg, so it was really hard to be open to new friends here. I felt really lonely and I was really sad because I just wasn't having as much fun and I wasn't looking forward to anything. So I would spend most of my time in my room and just sleeping. One day I got into a fight with my dad and then everything came to the surface. So I told them that I had been feeling really depressed and that my anxiety has increased a lot and social situations were getting really hard. 
and then we decided to um, go get help. I started going to therapy and at first I didn't really connect with my therapist but we pushed through and tried to find more help through different people. I joined a lot of sports teams uh, such as basketball and soccer and that was really nice because I started having friendships with the people on the teams and I also joined the Meeting House youth group and they would just listen to me and always be by my side. When I first shared it with the group, it was really hard, um, but then I felt really relieved because they knew and they were able to understand me more and we were able to build our friendships. So I would um, pray really long prayers and ask God for um, help to make me more calm and for more happiness. And then I'd also um, find a lot of quotes, uh, verses in the Bible and post them in my bedroom just to be reminded of God's presence. And I'd also sing a lot <laughs> with my headphones on. Lord, you catch me when I fall in. Even though I'm not very good at singing, I found it really fun and it really helped me be connected to God. Through prayer, I realized that I had to be more open with people here and, and just make new friendships here. And then I started being more open to people. And then through time, I started making a lot of friends and I became a lot happier. So my anxiety has decreased a lot since I've been going to therapy and I've just learned a lot of tools that help me. And even though one-on-one -on -one conversations scare me a lot, I've been able to push through. An example is I had a job interview recently and I was able to get through it and I ended up getting the job. So that was really good. <laughs> Now life in Canada is a lot better. I love playing on my school sports teams. And above all, I know that God will lead me and God will lead all of us. And I'm very thankful that I'm where I am now. Chloe went through a tough time, but she was able to speak up about what was going on to her family and she got the help that she needed. What I really love about this is how it connects to God, even putting up the Bible verses in her room. You could tell that it really helped. It was amazing. I love that now she's this happy, confident person that God created her to be. Totally. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives.